Yes, I think it is important uh, to study abroad, but um, I think every every cellist, every musician has somehow their own destiny. I, for example, left uh, my family and my country when I was already 11 and I went far away from, from Serbia to, to Russia and that's maybe too extreme, so to say, never studied in my country. But looking at the, at the students, um, I think it, it is also quite good to, 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 to do the, the bachelor in the own country if you, if you have a good teacher. All is depending on, on, um, on inspiring teacher. I think very important is to find a teacher um, you really, you really are inspired by. Uh, it's it's uh, not only that you like, but you're if you happen not to find this in in your country, then 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 look for it. It is great now at our days that uh, you can actually you know afford to have scholarships and 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 uh, study with the teachers. You can, you can choose. You can uh, do the master classes. What I think it is important. It is important to to speak other languages. Um, you know, not to speak only your own language, but also to, to I mean, that doesn't have to be perfect, but to, to understand the mentality of different uh, people. That is very important uh, also because for chamber music playing, for playing with the orchestra, with the conductor, with, with whatever you do professionally, is very, very important to understand the different mentalities, mentalities different people. And uh, so this, to travel and to meet people, it is important. What is my favorite cello piece? Um, my ce that it's you know that's a usual uh, usual answer. My favorite piece is the piece I play at the moment. Um, my favorite piece. So so this is very important to I think um, to be completely in love with the piece you play. Uh, so completely love this piece at that moment. Um, even sometimes you know you 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 play maybe a piece you're asked to play or, or maybe some contemporary piece you need to play for a competition or so and you think oh what a piece and then and then in the process of working um, you di discover so many things and, and you start to be in love with this piece and that becomes your favorite piece at the moment when you play so I think and I really um, can experience this that the piece I, I practice at the moment is my favorite piece. What do the cello sonatas you like the most? <laughs> I like the most. Um, you know, sometimes I remember I was, uh, uh, I don't know, maybe 13, 14, and I'd read, I had this, I really would, would like so much to play something, and I was, you know, kind of not yet allowed, or, or my teacher thought uh, it's not important. I, I think at the time I could not even, you know, say my wish that I would like to play a certain piece because it was. Uh, at the time I was studying and the teachers I was studying, we didn't talk uh, as a student, you didn't say much. I mean, you were, you were mostly listening. Um, but I remember I really wanted to play Frank Sonata and I even imagined how I would play it in a, in a certain hall in Belgrade. After a few years, I was already, you know, I moved from Moscow, I was maybe uh, 17 or so. My wish be become, became through, true. And I um, was playing this Frank Sonata in this hall, and I, I uh, enjoyed it very much. I cannot say that Frank Sonata is my favorite sonata. I mean, I like a lot Frank Sonata, but I also like uh, many other sonatas, and um, it is the same. I mean, what I play at that moment, I, I like the most. Maybe some things are easier for me or for everybody. Some some things, I, in a way easier to, 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 to get the right uh, sound, the right expression. Um, but it doesn't mean that they, they, uh, I like them more. For example, when I was really younger, uh, Beethoven sonatas were not easy for me. And I remember also some uh, remarks of some colleagues, yeah, 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 it's not really your music. And then I, I um, 
I, I I got even more somehow into that into that and and uh, I had this project of playing all the Beethoven string quartets and and really understanding so much and starting to to to, to love it and and uh, 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 respect and I don't know what can you do what is the word uh, the uh, the word we can use for Beethoven I mean such, such a depth and philosophy and, and as a listener and and sure as a player i mean to 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 work on this music uh, it's amazing so i would say for example uh, it's more difficult for me maybe than a frank sonata uh, maybe i did work more on a bit of sonatas and uh, i don't know if it's more fascinating this work but it's anyway it was uh, um, maybe longer. I mean, I can say that nearly all my life I spent uh, on, on, you know, working on Beethoven and understanding better and better. And um, yeah, so it's it's in a way it's more difficult to find the 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 the, the right approach and sound and everything in Beethoven than maybe in Frank and Rachmaninoff sonatas, but. You know, some people like, uh, for example, Andra Schiff says, you know, the, li the life is too short to play Rachmaninoff. But I must say, I also enjoy playing Rachmaninoff sonata, really, I really do. Um, so, yes, yeah, that, that's at the moment I play Rachmaninoff, I really like it very much. And then uh, when I listen to Beethoven, I think, oh, Beethoven, I mean, well, how can I, can I, you know, work on something else? This is so deep and so great. Yeah, tips on improving cello technique. Um, yeah, sure, it's it's depending on uh, on the level. Um, I do believe that it is important to um, come well through this moment. You know, we, when we when we are kids. I mean, I hope most of us has good have good teachers, so you you play and you don't think much, and then there is a, this moment where one has to start to do the, the, the technical things also more consciously. I do believe it's important to, to, to do scales every day, especially for string instrument players, because we need always, always to, to work on our sound and intonation. So to really, really be, you know, have a focused sound, to be aware, play very close bridge, uh, close to the bridge, and, or more in the fingerboard. For us, very important to be able to place clo play cl close to the bridge, so to really have um, feel the resistance on the string, and then on a, each part of the bow, on a frog, on the tip, to have the same quality of sound, not getting softer on the uh, tip, which is a uh, off very often a problem with cellist, or that the bow doesn't go straight is moving too much left hand to 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 have a relaxed hand fingers uh, independent fingers um being able to vibrate so not being too too um, stiff so i think it is important to do the, the scales and um, um to have some program to do every day um to feel very com comfortable Actually, with it. what do does improve the technique the most I mean, if one is already on a certain level, playing okay, well, that is the the the, uh, the musical ideas. So the the imagination of what you want to hear. In my opinion, improves um, improves our technique the most. So you you really need a certain sound. You really look for it. You really um, find a, a unex uh, something you cannot explain, which happens. In, in your fingers and in the whole body. We do play with the whole body, it's not only the fingers. So I think the, the, the musical idea is always leading us and also in our technical improvement. Yes, I mean, uh, you know, in the Corona times, there was a lot of this Zoom teaching um, I also did uh, quite a lot of teaching in Japan and um, now I mean we're planning I'm playing uh, in this group with Andra Schiff so we just uh, did a big tour with um, Bach concertos and I think we're planning also to to to, uh, to go to Japan 
so it's going to be I think in 25 so then, then I will be in Japan if not I mean um, I'm asked to do master class um, but I, I'm, I'm sorry now I don't remember exactly the town it's quite a big town um, uh, but um, yes yeah, so that that may may even happen before 25 I, I still always have a little bit difficult to to to, uh, to organize everything what I want to do but uh, no concrete plans but maybe so I will let you know on the small finger and the bow yes so um, after I was uh, you know for many years um, studying with in Russia with, with Dostropovich and his assistant and then also with Fournier I was playing uh, quite um, natural without uh, thinking very much about uh, a role of each finger um, on a bow and um, yeah I felt quite comfortable. And then I started to study with Navara, Andre Navara and in his school this is very very important so I did uh, do all the exercises and now I think uh, it is possible to play without taking care, but I do uh, uh, take care that the, the, the also with my students that the, the small finger is always strong and active and can keep the, 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 the hand of uh, falling down when it's not wanted, for example, changing of the bone, the changing the, the strings also more, more controlled. Uh, so there are plenty, plenty of exercise, Japan number seven, for example, um, for this. And I think, uh, in my opinion, it's good to develop the, the ability, the, the strength in the small finger. But uh, uh, when, when we play, not to think about it, not to always to, you know. So if it happens a little bit different, it is good. Uh, the French school is very much in developing the flexibility of the fingers and the, the whole I mean here so I do also teach that and and think it's good to develop mm, the best part of our profession I think is actually this uh, practicing at home <laughs> um, I think it's it's the nicest just just uh, uh, being with the instrument and uh, studying the pieces and uh, I, I must say I, I really like just playing, I <laughs> just like playing uh, also physically and um, yeah, and this, this uh, if it happens that, that, that it just goes by itself, it's, it's wonderful. I mean, there are these amazing sounds and, and it brings us in, in this much uh, deeper level of our existence because we're also use our body so that that that's this combination i think is wonderful i think it is important um to have uh, some uh, procedure which which you you know it's helpful for me it's important to 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 do uh, the scales and not only the scales like playing the scales but but also feeling the 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 whole body and feeling comfortable with the instrument because I think every day it's a little bit different different um, how the body feels I mean how, how is the we can ex uh, do the stro uh, the shorter or um, longer end pin and, and how we sit and all this with the back and I, I very often uh, use this example of Rostropovich for saying that the cellist is like a locomotive and he was saying that, like um, in the locomotive, there are these big wheels, and uh, this is the body of the cellist. So the big wheels they don't move much, but they have the all strengths and and uh, all the movements come as actually from the body. Then there are the middle wheels; they move a little bit faster. Yeah, so they are our arms, and they they are the really small wheels. They they are our fingers, so they move fast. But, uh, you know, everything comes actually from the body, the, 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 our feeling comfortable, being able to, to, to play everything what we want. So, and that, that would be my tip for the um, warming up, 
is to to be aware you know when you play slowly I, I start always by playing slowly the scales you know close to the bridge and every day a different scale uh, from one note uh, I play the minor and uh, you know melodic minor harmonic minor and uh, major and uh, uh, so slowly but slowly then maybe uh, eight notes in a bow on, and then maybe detaché and spiccato and arpeggios and double stops and some exercises for the uh, like Dupont you know 16 for the position change and and also in the thumb positions um, yeah so to have this kind of procedure you also enjoy physically I think this is very very important uh, why I was saying about this feeling comfortable about the locomotive so the think about the, about the body because when we then later you know we really should be completely free to in the music sometimes the music is like this so it's okay to be tense to, to be uh, to move differently to, to take all kind of positions um, to be natural so to say uh, in, 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 the, in the searching I remember you know Sviatoslav Richter he would get up uh, playing standing for some trills uh, they, he thought that's the only way they sound right and um, yeah so this is all okay but uh, important is to have this uh, when we start the day to have really to get to get the feeling of the body and the connection uh, with the instrument you know a little bit with the breathing with this playing slowly um, moving all the joints you know that that uh, that we are sure we don't uh, uh, have a tendency to hold something which is not needed to be hold so that that's very often the thing that uh, there is a difficult place and we think okay difficult that's all it is no it's uh, it's just to get the habit to to hold so to say to use the muscles already needed for that moment not uh, so very often even just just you know playing um, changing the fingers we need the, a tendency to hold the whole hand and not relax the this part of the hand. Yeah, this is more in details, but I think I answered some of the question. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm just coming from this uh, wonderful tour with Andres Schiff with the Bach concerto. So <clears throat> this is for me uh, uh, really was so inspiring and. The, Bach's music it, it was really also funny because we were um, traveling uh, 18 people it's a smaller group I mean Bach concertos only strings and, and Andres and the whole trip was uh, um, very very difficult because the planes were cancelled it was the, the, the week where it was very cold minus and we had to 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 go by train we had every evening the concerts and uh, the trains didn't work we had him to take a taxi from uh, Basel to Frankfurt and uh, really really difficult but nobody got ill or got any kind of cold or so everybody around I was uh, hearing from my son from my uh, grandson so everybody fought the fever and the people couldn't come to the concert also ill and uh, and so uh, Anders was also saying that Bach's music which keeps us uh, uh, you know in a such a good uh, um, mood and, and also stayed somehow and that was really because we played every evening six Bach concertos um, and it's um, yeah what I think is is the, the the most inspiring and most beautiful when 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 you think that it's just happening by by itself and uh, um, in the process of playing and uh, also in the process when I listen to Andres um, it is so so inspiring because I mean it is such an um, amazing balance between um, you know um, making this music sound I mean in, 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 in the way he hears in the, his personality but it's it's still so 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 much Bach and, and so so um, true so true so I think that's the most inspiring when you have a feeling that this composer is just alive 
just just you know talking to you and, and this music is alive and I had also this with Chandra Vague a few times this feeling that um, you know for example Brahms um, quintet F major quintet that is no G major actually was it the G major quintet that like this music would sound like this in Brahms ears you know when he was writing it so that all this what is written uh, um, it just helps us to understand what the composer exactly, you know, what the experience is. It's so, so strong and so beautiful. Yeah, so um, I cannot, you know, choose just one moment. I, um, I'm very lucky also with my colleagues when we played the Beethoven Quartets. It was beautiful and beautiful moments and uh, this discovery Bartok Quartets also. I'm working now on the Bartok again Bartok first quartet and uh, play for to play next week in um, England so it's also very inspiring mm -hmm. you know I was a, a child I was 11 and uh, when he left I, I was 14 15 you know he had already because he was not allowed anymore to do anything, uh, play or conduct. I remember uh, being there and uh, that that it was, uh, so to say, the only sun, the really strong sun for me, kind of uh, feeling of, um, I don't know, this this vast dimension of, of, of uh, also human being but uh, also musically what he was also saying a lot is uh, a lot of examples um, in the fantasy like he would say it should sound like a drop of water early morning on a leaf and it was you know so clear uh, for a child or it should sound like the issue is moving a little bit because of the wind behind and uh, um, so all kind of examples like this. So I, I would say what 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 I as a child. I mean I met him also later a few times, and um, just uh, short lessons. But I remember most of the child. So to um, to experience the music, um, to make the music alive for oneself somehow with with the, also with the pictures with, with some experiences one has, or maybe something you read in a book or, or you experience with the weather or, or also sometimes the movements of animals. So any, anything which can you inspire, inspire you to, to, to somehow always come into, the, into this atmosphere of the peace. So that, that's um, this, this fantasy and, and um, maybe something also a little bit visual. Uh, which I uh, learned when I was very small. I think he, he was not only with children talking like this, he always had these examples and and always different ones. Uh, so the people sometimes say, oh, he said for Shostakovich this. But then if you would play completely the opposite, he would say a completely different picture for, for, for you. So it's not that he said, yeah, for, for Shostakovich is exactly this picture for everybody is so it, it, it's changing but um, I would say this is the, 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 the to, to use the fantasy to use a lot the fantasy and this is what is also in his playing this this very very strong extremes um, so for me is always the best to to um, to, to to be in the in the character of the piece I play you know so so uh, not to have um, thoughts which are disturbing and so how to get the, this discipline of having uh, positive or um, thoughts which helps us so so that I was uh, kind of experiencing also in my life that um, uh, sometimes you know competitions or so to say some important concerts and then once it oh hope it will not go bad and hope I will not stop and hope I will not fall down or I don't know you know all the bad thoughts and um, this takes uh, takes a lot of energy and um, usually the concerts then go okay I mean uh, 
so anyway it's it's just uh, kind of uh, some, something which can happen but my, for me, myself I discovered that it's important to have the discipline and um, to, to, to think about what you want to happen how, how you want it to happen and uh, in a way to think less about myself and think more about uh, um, the music I play and more about uh, how I want it to sound how I want this atmosphere to be and how, how how, yeah, maybe um, to make it understandable or, or um, so, and, and myself, I would very often, even on the day of the concert, write, um, you know, some, something I understood more about the piece I play or, or some concepts for me to, to, to keep myself in a, in a, in a good mood, uh, in a good, in a right, so to say, right uh, way of thinking. And um, yeah, so I don't think uh, one can, you know, to say uh, if, I, if I played a very good concert that day, I did that and I have always to do the same. Um, this is also a little bit, uh, uh, um, how to say, how everything in life, we cannot control everything. Uh, some concerts, they go, you don't expect them, suddenly it goes so well and, and uh, and some concerts they go okay but uh, not such a big inspiration um yeah it's it's never uh, one cannot completely control it but for myself i discovered that if i think less about myself and more about music um that helps me uh, to to concentrate well yeah the stage fear is is actually the same so if one doesn't think about oneself then there is no stage fear actually you know because the stage fear is uh, this that one would not like to see oneself in some embarrassing situation you know that you don't play in tune or, or you stop or you, or you know, don't play well so uh, fear of this it is also discipline not to think about uh, you know bad things but on the other side, uh, I think a little bit of, of this adrenaline, it, it is a, a special moment, you know, like I say to my students, also uh, one needs to practice this, also look for for this, because we do practice alone and, and then we, we play this for somebody to, to, to see, because what we can do as an interpreter, as a, it's not that we write music slowly, so, we, we can make it happen in a certain moment. Yeah, we practice, practice a lot, but then we play it, our concerto in 20 minutes. So this 20 minutes to be focused and to really, you know, be there and, 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 and uh, play this, this what you, you would really like to, what you worked on and what, how you imagine it should be. So to focus on this, uh, it is it is a special moment so we get a little bit more of adrenaline and so this this is actually good and so even every lesson should be like this so when you go to the lesson it's it's a moment where you can try or even yourself alone when maybe you practice practice for a few weeks and then you make a recording you play the whole piece through through and you're it's already a little bit of this uh, excitement First, it feels, oh, I will never be able to play it at all. Or you, you think, oh, I'm so I can play it good. And then you're surprised with how it happens. Um, but this, uh, as I say, is the stage fear. Um, everybody has to find, uh, for me, better not to think about myself and to think what I want to hear, how I want to hear it. And then also to, to look forward to this moment, to this opportunity to play for somebody, uh, to play for, for people, to make this music alive, to, um, yeah, maybe sometimes it's a little bit unpleasant. Sometimes this artist rooms backstage are uh, awful and it's cold and it's nothing, you know, like uh, the conditions are not great and, and the chair is not good and this and that. This is all the, the everyday concert life, but um, 
but I mean, we have this this uh, uh, this goal, this this uh, you know big wish to make this music uh, sound because I think our classical music of, of the, the big composers we play, um, as I say, the this transports everybody in a such a different world, so much deeper and uh, um, rich, richer than, than uh, uh, it's the, the everyday life and, and, you know, newspapers and maybe uh, popular music and folk music, you know, this is, um, the, the, the classical music goes so much, you can you come in touch with all this feelings and uh, thoughts and, and uh, um, how to say it, it's, it's a really a state of, of everything, the mind, emotion, body. It's really important we do it. I think it's very important for the world. It's important every person who is sitting at home and just practicing because the sounds, they, 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 they are very important for our world and society and everything. So, I mean, the stage fear, yes, can happen, but uh, I think our um, goal is so, so big that one can forget about, uh, yeah, sometimes goes better, sometimes goes a little bit less good. Um, but we have this mission, we have this mission uh, to, to make this music alive, to, 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 to play it beautifully, to, to go deeper, yeah, like this. Oh, what inspires me, yeah. I guess it's true, I mean, this question is, is true that I, I really, uh, it's interesting, I mean, in the night there's so many things happening, yeah, somehow there are there, these dreams that you never know, I mean, sometimes in life everything beautiful, the dreams can be so, so, um, unpleasant or, or dark or I mean I have a lot of dreams. I do actually uh, remind myself uh, every morning that I'm so grateful for the life and, and yeah to just to just be joyful yeah so so uh, because everything what what happens one can see like this and like that but uh, uh, to be joyful I think that that's if one is grateful for, for, for the life and I must say, um, I have a, a very comfortable and nice life. I mean, uh, um, I could probably complain also about some things, but um, there are always some, 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 some difficulties in a way. But I mean, generally, um, I do remind myself about the, 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 to be grateful and to be joyful. Yeah, to be joyful, I think then, then um, yeah, everything what hap what happens, uh, there are not so many things which completely can destroy our joy. I mean, uh, you know, of uh, of uh, of life. That that that's that's how I see. Yeah, I mean, I I um, I, w I always would like to do something, you know, with the hands because uh, so with the hands something. Um, one can see because I have a feeling our profession is something, you know, you practice and practice, you play, but there is nothing which stays. You can record it. It's why I like to record the things because, and then, uh, and I think it's uh, for a lot of musicians. So, I mean, in the last uh, years, I was, <laughs> I don't know if I can call this my hobby, but I'm kind of uh, uh, working on this and renovating and I would like to, to create a, a place where where it's nice in the nature to to um, to combine the things like uh, uh, you know playing the music but also being in the nature like swimming I, I like a lot uh, like moving also jogging and doing some some physical and I, I, so to say sports I, I i don't i'm not extremely sport in one direction but i like a lot to go to swim in a lake i don't like to go swimming in a swimming pool but in a lake or in a, a sea being in a, in the woods for long going for a, for a walks for a jogging and bicycle i'm not so good but uh so this kind of doing something uh, uh, sporty and then i also like all kind of um you know 
discovering with the body the, the exercises for, for breathing or also meditation. I'm, since I was a child, I was always interested in uh, psychology and uh, religion. So all kinds of religions. And um, I even spent a year in a Zen Buddhist uh, school, kind of monastery. In Berlin, so it's not a monastery, it's a, it's a school, but you're, you're then there and, uh, you know, learn all the techniques and meditations and so of life. So I, I'm interested in that also. And uh, uh, and so this, maybe creating something also physical, like these houses and renovating the houses. And, and, and my wish is to be more and more um, able to do these things, like also the gardening, so it... Uh, I have, for example, a son who is very good in, in uh, renovating the furnitures. I mean, his profession is also completely different, but um, this is what I will also a little bit more develop.